I'm at Super George and I'm so excited. Why am I excited? Because the word of God is good, praise God. And I'm, car I'm a carrier of good news. I'm a carrier of good things, praise God. So if you will receive what I have for you today, you too will become good, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. L let's just call for that daily bread right now. Are you ready? Make this declaration with me. Say, Father, give me today my daily bread. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. This thing, confess it. Don't just uh, give me mm, his praying. Okay, amen. No, say it. Let it be on record that you made that demand today. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we honor you today for your love and thank you for this time, Lord that we will bring forth your truth and manifest it in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I declare every body is lifted, every yoke is destroyed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I'll share with you yesterday, why do people suffer? Why do people lack? Now, this is the truth. I know there are different kinds of challenges. There are, there are health challenges, but the most common challenge that distracts people in life is where their needs are concerned. That is the most, you see, because you don't have, you don't know what to do, you end up going to steal. You end up cheating people. Even, even pastors in ministry because you get to that place where you need and your need is not being met. You think of how to begin to manipulate people, manipulate the scriptures so that you can get people to give money to you. What is driving that? It's a sense of lack. It's the truth. It's a sense of lack. So I was telling you yesterday, you know, when, when people begin to say, don't, don't talk about prosperity too much. Don't talk about, yeah, People take it overboard, but doesn't remove the fact that it's an important part of the gospel message. There is no way you will believe in Jesus Christ and walk with him that your life will not get better. If your life is not getting better, and when I mean your life, I'm not just saying now I have peace of mind, now I have joy, now wonderful. But if you truly have those things, it will translate in your life to the point that someone else looking at you without those things will envy. The Bible spoke about Isaac. The Bible said the Philistines envied him. See, not because he was the richest man in the environment, but it was the quality of his riches. Listen to me. It is the quality of our lives that brings about the envy from unbelievers. It's not the car we drive. It's not the house we live in. No, it's not. Because when you look around, you see unbelievers having better houses. You see unbelievers driving better cars. That's the truth. But what attracts, um, what, what makes us distinct, what makes us different is the quality of our testimony. Now, someone bought a new car. Oh, how did you get this car? He's unwilling to tell you the details. You see, because there is something about it that you may just want to rebuke. But then a child of God gets a car. Oh, wow. How did you get this car? Oh, wow. I'll tell you, I, 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 I was believing God for this. Then I began to do this. I did this. And then I was instructed to do this. And boom, this is, this is how the response I got. And this is how it came about. Oh, wow. And then they go back home. And, and someone is thinking, why can't I trust God like this fellow? He has a better car than you. 
But then he, he looks at your car. Your car seems to carry much value than his car. This is, this is, this is the truth. And every child of God, see, that we, we don't rate our blessing by those physical things. Rather, we rate our blessing by the quality of the things that we possess. When I mean quality, not expensive or, or how much it costs. No, but the quality of testimony attached to them. The quality, the story that is attached to them. That is what, you see, like they tell you, every man's secret is in his story. That's just the truth. The secret of your blessing is in your story. How did you get that house? How did you get that car? The secret is in the story. See, so when you get to that point where you cannot tell, that's why I always say this, you know, in churches when they share testimony, you know, the, the person holding the microphone will say, go straight to the point, go straight to the point. And what do they expect you to do? I was blind. Now I see. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's no testimony. That's just a showcasing of things that have just happened, in, you know, in your life in, the, in, in recent time. A real testimony can take the whole service. And what is wrong if, if, if one person's testimony is just a message for that service? Now, real testimony. Because people need to understand, okay, you, you got a new job. Okay, you've been out of job for eight months. Okay, so how did you get this new job? How, why is it a testimony? Is it a testimony just that you got a new job? Or is, is the process by which you got the job the testimony? Because if we've got to give glory to God, we must see God in the process. Now, that's what you need to understand. We must see God in the process. So when you stop or hide the process from people, how then will they glorify God? No, just go straight to the point. Just go. You, you were without job for eight months. Yes, yeah, so, so what now happened? Oh, I came to church two weeks ago and pastor declared that this week will be a glorious week. And somehow I just believed that word and I took that word for myself. And, and, and on Monday, I got a call from an organization and here am I. I, I got a new job. People want to know how did you survive those eight months? What did you learn? those eight months what what new thing came to you what did your eyes open to those eight months because if if truly and this is it the greatest challenge or the greatest undoing of every testimony is when you don't understand the process because see, satan can attack that testimony and you will not know what to do so you find people who got healed miraculously and they rejoice, they shared the story of their healing. And the sickness comes back and they don't know what to do. You know what happened? You didn't understand how you got healed in the first place. So the sickness will come back. You maybe got healed by, you know, you go for a healing meeting and there is so much grace operating in that atmosphere. So the demons left. And like Jesus said, they go through dry places seeking rest and finding none. They say, oh, let's go back to where we came out from. So let me tell you this. You know, sometimes when we do mass prayer for healing, I'll tell you this. The sickness will go. Now, especially when it is caused by a demon, those are the easiest sickness to get healed. Because then you just say, out, and then the devil goes. The moment the devil goes, the person will be healed. But the challenge is this. If they don't understand how they got healed, the, Jesus said it, the sickness will come back. And when it comes back and find this person just there, you know, ah, thank God, though, I'm healed, though, I'm healed, though. Hey, thank God, though. And you say, no, keep praising God. What are they praising God? How do you praise God for your healing when you don't understand how he healed? How do you praise God for that job when you don't understand how the job came about? In that waiting time, I'll share it last week, Thursday, in our fellowship meeting. I'll share it on patience. In that time, patience was at work in you. And, and James tells us, let patience have her perfect work in you. 
And when patience is done with you, guess what patience does? It fills every vacuum. It fills every... Now, when that testimony comes, it comes to a prepared person, it comes to a ready person, and it comes to one who can sustain it. When the devil tries to say, devil, yeah, you have no place in this place. The, I mean, you, you just get out of here. And then the devil will say, oh, please, he knows, he knows, he knows. And then he leaves. And the, the amazing thing about this is, I'm sharing all this with you because we're, we're, we're rounding off the month in a few days. And we're going to enter the real last quarter of the year. You've got to change something about yourself. Now, when a believer is suffering for so long, the first thing that comes to mind is, where is his relationship with God? Now, he wants to think, eh, what, why do you think I don't have a relationship with God? I'm a believer, I've been born again for 25 years. Okay. I'm a worker in my church. Okay. I, I, I sow seeds. Okay. I start telling you all the things he does. Okay. That's all those things does not define a relationship with the Lord. You can't start naming things you have done to show your relationship. It's like a man saying, um, do, you, do you love your wife? He said, of course. I bought her a car. I married her. Can I marry somebody that I don't love? I, 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 I got a good house for her. It still doesn't show that you're in a good relationship with your wife. A good relationship with your spouse or anyone is in the frequency of your communication and the quality of your communication. Because, you see, husband and wife can be communicating, but you know their communication. There's no food in the house today. Please drop money. Okay, I've heard. He drops money and then he goes out comes back from work that whole day. Oh, welcome, your food is ready. Okay, he eats the food and then it's time to sleep and then he sleeps. Do you communicate with your wife? Oh, of course I do. I communicate with my wife every day. But the quality of your communication is almost zero. Now you want to know a man that has quality communication with his wife. I'll tell you how you know. He's talking to you and you guys are talking about something. So you, you know, you say something like, ah, you know, just like my wife was telling me yesterday. Do you know, do you know this, this, this? Like, I mean, it takes, in, 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 in a communication that will last like 30 minutes, you find out that he's mentioned his wife, his wife. Not, and his wife is not even there. Not because he's trying to magnify his wife. He's just letting you unconsciously know. And it's not even deliberate. You see, he might be talking about office works. <laughs> Do you know, yesterday I was just discussing with my wife about this, this matter. And then the wisdom she brought, well, you know, like, oh, wow, your wife. Oh, oh man, thank God for my wife. Because she's so intelligent. You, you just, is he trying to brag about his wife? No, it is just the truth. He went home. He's got quality communication with his wife. He doesn't even have to go home. He, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll be talking to my wife on the phone. And they'll be talking and discussing something. Then I'll say, wait, why are we even talking on the phone? I'm on my way home. When I get home, we'll talk to just like, okay, you know. Like, you just realize, you know, because something is in your mind. Who do you talk to? I've got my wife to talk to. You call your wife and then you're, you're gisting and then you're just talking. So you just get to that point where everything about your life, your spouse is somehow involved. That shows good communication. Now, a child of God, the way I can tell that you have a good relationship with God is in the frequency and quality of your communication with the Holy Spirit. When last did you have a chat with the Holy Spirit? I have not just said, you say, hmm, hmm, this morning, you know, this morning, say, okay, well, I, I told God that I'm tired of this life that I'm living. I told him that if, if things don't change in three days, I will backslide. 
that doesn't tell communication. Real communication is seen in, and you just talking. Like, hey, do you know? Do you know the whole Spirit was just telling me? Do you know there's something I've been doing wrong for many years? I didn't realize it until the Holy Spirit told me. Now, I said, really? What did He tell you? <laughs> he He told me like, wow, how? By the time He was done explaining to me, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> you know, that's that's it. So when a believer is suffering for a very long time. You know, sometimes oh, let us help those people in need in church. Wonderful. But hey, when, when someone is in need for so long, something is wrong that we have to deal with. Our time is up already. Praise God. Listen, we'll continue tomorrow. Have the blessed and the greatest day ever in your life today. In Jesus' name, amen.